Vegas Rock Dog Radio. Pets. People. Pop culture. Hello everyone, I'm Sam, the queen of rock and roll dogs and the host of Vegas Rock Dog Radio. On today's show, I'm talking about scruffing cats, pit bull bands, and how to take care of your pet's paws in winter. So stay right there. Rock Dog Radio, Pets, People, Pop Culture. Hi everyone, welcome to the show. I'm your host Sam. I'm the queen of rock and roll dogs and this is Vegas Rock Dog Radio. We're a rock and roll show all about pets, people and pop culture. <laughs> I was waiting for Jim to finish that for me. I was inhaling, <laughs> not exhaling. So you were inhaling? For, what? I was not in the proper breathing sequence to respond. Oh my god. That is a t- typical gym response. So random. <laughs> I would never have known you were going to say that in a million years. Correct. <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, uh, here we are for another live show of Vegas Rock Dog Radio. It's been another busy week for animals and uh, a lot going on in the animal world. We've got a great show lined up for you today. And uh, we're glad that you're here. If you're new to the show, thank you for listening in. And to our regular listeners, hello. This is kind of our Saturday morning date, isn't it, Jim, with our listeners? It is. It's it's top of the morning. I've been out for a couple miles with the dog. It's so warm here, I'm sweating. Oh, I'm sorry. There are people in cold parts of the world right now. That's so mean. (laughs) Why would you say that? It's been really nice, though, I will say. Great for walks. Get them in now before it gets too hot. That's all I have to say about that. Well, um, today's show is dedicated to Flash. Now, Flash was a handsome cat. Flash, who, uh, hero of the universe. I'm not sure that's who he was named after. Flash um, Gordon. I'll bet they named him after Flash I'll Gordon. Have to, I'll have to ask. I'll but bet they did. The reason we're dedicating this show is that Flash passed away yesterday. Oh, uh, he was 15 and a half years old, and... Um, He's going to be sorely missed by Eldona and John. And they've been his family from the day he was born. They've been there all the way. And that's very, very special. Um, We do feel for them. We know how that feels. So uh, uh, lots of love to Eldona and John and uh, and to Flash. So that's uh, that's our dedication for today. And uh, it's the least we could do for Flash. well, if you're new to the show, like I said, if you if you come to the show all the time, then you probably know where you're going to find us. But if you're new, this is where you'll find us on VegasRockDogRadio.com. And you'll find us on Periscope, Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, Tumblr, and Instagram. Our blog is TheRockAndRollDog.com. That's where we tell you uh, who's coming on the show, who's been on the show. Uh, that's where our giveaways happen. We have good giveaways. You're always giving away stuff. I've always got stuff to give away. So I work with some great companies. So that's where our giveaways um, show up most often. And we have an app. And the app is, you'll go to yap.us. I just find it funny. It's called Yap. <laughs> Don't you? Mm-hmm. It's <laughs> excellent. That's such a cool <laughs> yap. site. Uh, Y-A-P-P dot U-S. It's free. Download the app itself onto your phone, and then you're going to download Vegas Rock Dog Radio. Don't just search for that. Of course, you're going to find us after the show on iTunes, iHeartRadio, Spoke by Sirius XM, and any other podcast app that you have on your phone. 
but we love it when people listen in live. We give people a good laugh too because I um, on the spot make up words, not intentionally. <laughs> <laughs> I've said some fun things on this show, haven't I, Jim? Random word invention. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's very spontaneous. I think the funniest thing that I ever said, well, and there's many, but the funniest thing, and I didn't even realize, but because of my accent, and we were talking about anal sex. Sex. I just said it wrong. Just did it. What's wrong with <laughs> I you? I said it wrong. People don't want to hear the vulgarities. <laughs> it's not vulgarities. Look, even Mr. <laughs> Twix is disturbed. Oh my gosh, he's just leapt up onto my lap. The dogs are always here at the studio. We got Mr. Twix and uh, and Miss Thornton. Can you hear him? Can you hear him licking my face? He's, he's sniffing on the mic. <laughs> oh, he's hilarious. Anyway, <laughs> I was talking about anal sex part of the anal glands yeah oh the glands are in the sacs you're still not saying it right and i'm still cringing. I'm, so, I'm, I'm saying it all, right this I'm is all, my I'm cringing <laughs> this on is you. my accent but the thing is and then people wanted to correct me and say it's glands no it's not the glands are inside the anal sacs and that's what we're talking about because it, it's important that you know what you're doing with them um <laughs> and look after them for their health because that impacts a lot of things with your pets but um of course, with the accent, it sounded like anal sex. And uh, I can't tell you how many people were commenting and texting and just having a good old laugh at my expense. And I didn't realize till halfway through the show when Jim was pulling funny faces without actually saying what was going on. And then it clicked. He says, oh, I thought you said something else. And I said, what do you mean? And then I clicked and we had a good old laugh after that, didn't we, Jim? Why are you on that subject again now? <laughs> Mr. Twix is very disturbed um, because he had to have his glands uh, fixed he, by the he did last week. And yeah, he was full. She said he had a pound worth of juice in him. Oh, God. You see, that's more disgusting than me saying what I just said. Uh, that's gross. That's a horrible word. I can't stand that word. There's certain words that just make you cringe. Don't say them, Jim. I know what you're going to say. I'm not going to say you, what. You want to. I'm not. Oh, uh, well, I've got to say, Mr. Twix is in studio, Miss Thornton is in studio, and Miss Galaxy, she looks down on us to make sure <laughs> we don't get out of hand <laughs> during the show, which we do. Um, Twixie, you may have to go down for a second, baby boy, so I can actually uh, read what's coming up next on the show. But uh, here's our update. So we've got lots to talk about today, lots of different subjects. Uh, here's our uh, weekly update. This is This has been... An incredible week for the show that we did last week, which was uh, the show with Bonnie Harlan. She is the founder of Prevent Pet Suffocation. And that was our topic last week. She came on the show. The sheer amount of listeners, both on the live show and the podcast, was astounding. The sheer amount of people that shared that information, it was astounding. It I was blown away you by it. good numbers from it. Amazing numbers. And I love my stats, as most people know. But it's an indication of what people are interested in and what they really care about. If you missed the show, you can go over to VegasRockDogRadio.com. Scroll down to where it says Demand Shows. And you'll see the show right there. Click on it and you'll be able to listen to the show. It's, um, it's, a, it's, it's, it's a little known subject, which is pets that suffocate in snack bags and in... Uh, uh, other food packaging but it's a very common death believe it or not and it's totally preventable and it shocked a lot of people it really shocked and upset a lot of people and unfortunately this is what happened to bonnie's dog blue and it spurred her on to prevent anybody else's pets dying in that manner unnecessarily. And as I say, it was a great show. I want to say thank you for everybody who shared and commented and, and liked and told their friends. And it's just been brilliant. It was a great start to the year. Because if we can get some awareness, we can save some lives. And it's as simple as that. Um, I have a friend that's listening in. <laughs> who said, hey, when can I listen to your live show? So I sent him the, the info. And... Uh, I mentioned the word fur kids, yeah, fur babies. And he was just like, oh, my gosh. He sent me the emoji with a big slap on the forehead, like, oh, are you kidding me? And uh, I said to him, well, um, whether you like it or not, and you're a pet parent too. <laughs> and he said, well, I'm more of a, more of a flatmate. And I said, ah, oh, maybe more of a catmate. 
But here's the thing. I think I'm going to take credit for this. I am going to take credit for this. I'm going to say about five years ago, I started saying pet parent. And the reason I started saying pet parent is the, there is a very, dis, it was almost like there, is, there are people who have pets who are in different categories, aren't they, Jim? Yep. They are. They yeah, are. different different levels of, uh, you know, care, why they have pets. Care and them. how they view their pets. And it's very distinct. So the way I described it were the people that really cared about every aspect of their pet's well-being, from their nutrition to training to the types of medical care, whether they're going to vaccinate or not vaccinate or what kind of vaccinations, whether they're going to sterilize or go and do a traditional spay-neuter. Based on, on, on those kind of things is how I kind of categorize people so i would definitely say we're pet parents most definitely or guardians because our job is to look after them but a pet owner it has this feeling of like master and slave kind of feel and i find that those people come themselves a pet owner don't don't really focus that much on every aspect of their pet's well-being and th- so that's how I started that whole thing. That's really what it was. So um, I'm happy to say that all my friends are pet parents or they've got flatmates, <laughs> catmates. <laughs> so that's that's the reason why I use that. So and the, for a lot of people who don't have kids, we call we say, you know, uh, dogs and cats are the new kids for kids, for babies. But really, I think what it just implies is that you just go all out for your I'm joking, all out for your pets. I was joking. How do you choke on fresh? Is that my fault? You choke on fresh air because it's always my fault when you choke on food. <laughs> oh, uh, David just texted me. He said, "Why can't my cat just be my good friend?" He certainly can be your good friend. He has a gorgeous cat. Oh, so gorgeous! We're going to be talking about cats today, by the way. Uh, before, but I, what I think what I need to do is put this this furry, floppy Mister on the floor. Do you want to go down? He enjoys being, he spends most of his time on top of tables and coffee tables and dining room tables. And uh, that doesn't bother me in the slightest. Uh, that, that's he what, likes perches. That's what he likes. <laughs> well, he's going down off my perch right now. There we go. So uh, I just thought I would tell you that, but isn't that funny? Why can't my cat be my good friend? Well, your cat is your good friend. In fact, your, your pets are your best friends. They are the best friends you could ever get, really, when you think about it. Uh, what's my other update? <laughs> my other update. Uh, oh, today. Oh, this is going to make, make people laugh too. Um, my sisters and family members have pets. And so I call them my niece dogs and niece cats and nephew dogs and nephew cats <laughs> because they are. And Buddy is the beagle that my twin sister rescued about three years ago. And today, well, not, it was yesterday, actually. Today, yesterday was his, what we call the gotcha day. The day she got him, got him from the rescue and saved him. And it was his anniversary yesterday. And uh, he, he had a lovely day yesterday. And then he stole Princess Madonna's uh, food. So he had a little fat belly yesterday. But <laughs> they let it slide <laughs> since, since it was his big anniversary. But isn't he a sweet dog, Jim? He's great. Oh, he's a nice sweet, beagle. sweet, sweet dog. My sister has three. She has Jem. She has <laughs> Princess Madonna. That when I told Jim the name of the dog, what was it you said? Oh my God! Because your sister's a crazy Madonna fan. She is. But you you said to me, I uh, can't remember all the names that. I have well, you before. said, <laughs> why don't you just call the dog Princess Madonna, Mother Teresa, Lady Diana? <laughs> Not Mother Teresa. <laughs> it was Mother Teresa. I don't it was. Oh my God. <laughs> Uh, and then Buddy was the third one. So there you go. That's my little update on my Nerf Dog Buddy. Uh, Jim spent the whole week at CES this week playing the Gibson Show Tent. Didn't you? You had a great week. It was awesome. Yeah, we had a good time at the Consumer Electronics Show. Oh, it was so crowded. And the first day it was raining like crazy. Oh, I know. That's oh, right. Oh, it was like miserable winter weather for a day. But you definitely have had a busy week. So uh, we're actually hanging out for once today <laughs> in fact cooking right now is what i'm going to call my winning my award-winning chili i've never won an award but i plan to win one today because i've entered it it's into your first chili and no i've made chili before when many times chili i used to make chili con carne when i ate meat but how can you not remember that i cooked when have, for I, you all eat, when have I eaten chili i've had stew but no you've chili. had chili you've had oh. anyway we're not going down that path Here's the thing. The Southern Nevada Beagle Rescue. 
he's holding a chili cook off today. I planned on, on winning. I'm calling mine the English chili because it's got chocolate. <laughs> it's got Guinness in it. <laughs> it has. It's great. It's going to be amazing. Maybe I shouldn't tell people what's in it because they might be put off. But it's very common to put those kind of things in chilies. Anyway, so I plan on winning. I hope to tell you next week that I won. <laughs> so there you go. Jim tasted it last night, though, and was like, hmm, I think the flavors need to blend more. So what do you mean by that? So, But it's been, it's been cooking overnight. It's what gonna, are you saying? It's going to be amazing. I think you're insulting my chili. That's what I think. Oh, your chili doesn't have feelings. No, but I do. Okay, so yeah. let's get on with this show. <laughs> In fact, do we do we need to take a break? If you'd like. Let's take a quick commercial break. When we come back, we're going to talk about protecting your pet's paws in the winter months. So stay right there. We're listening to, you're listening to Vegas Rock Dog Radio. With me, Sam, your host, the queen of rock and roll dogs. Vegas Rock Dog Radio. Pets. People. Pop culture. Pet Scene Magazine is dedicated to Las Vegas pets and the people who love them. It's a source of news and information for pet lovers, as well as offering valuable coupons and specials on pet products and services. Find them online at www.lvpetscene.com or look for them on Facebook. At Carl's Jr., not only do we make you happy with our delicious charbroiled burgers, we also make your dogs happy. Come through our drive through with your furry friends and we'll offer them a treat. We love to see their smiling faces. Our website, carlsjunioroflasvegas.com, has a treat in store for its customers too, with free coupons anytime, so visit us often. Carl's Jr. is a proud and active supporter of animal adoption in our community. You can find us at Carl's Jr. of Las Vegas.com. Vegas Rock Dog Radio. Pets. People. Pop culture. We're back, everyone. We've gathered ourselves. <laughs> We're going to move on to protecting your dog's paws in the winter months. Now, although we clearly do not have a winter like other parts of the country or other countries we enjoy to be outside and take longer walks because it's cooler with our dogs uh, we're close to mount charleston we haven't actually been we didn't go last year did we jim and that's where it's a lot colder and there's snow believe it or not what is it 45 minute drive from here 50 minute drive and we've got a ski resort yeah, yeah, if you didn't know that, now you know. And a lot of a lot of us like to go up there with our pets and, and get a nice walk in. And um, it's funny because a lot, lot of people just don't associate Vegas with, with snow. It's, it's not that far away. But this time of year just brings a lot of dry air with it, especially from heating in the home. I, I'm sure you all realize how dry your skin is. Um, snow, ice, and salt, um, of all which can be tough on your dog's delicate paws. Not salt here because we don't use it because we don't have this, the snow. But in other parts of the country, salt is used a lot to uh, dissolve that snow. And uh, the last thing you want to do is stay inside during winter and, and not take your pets out because you don't know how to protect their paws. So a little extra care of those paws is what you need to do. And this is what you need need to do. These are your steps. Yeah, Trim often. No matter what season we're in, of course, we're, you're going to trim your pet's nails regularly. And that includes the tufts of fur between their paws as well. Because the, the paws and the tufts trap a lot of debris. A lot of debris. And chemicals from, you know, the ices and salt and all that horrible stuff. And uh, have you seen dogs that come in from the snow and they have those big snow snowballs stuck to the legs? Have you seen that, Jim? Yeah. That used to happen back home. <laughs> so, so lots of people like put little leg warmers on their pets. They don't want to drag around you know, 10 pounds of snow on their legs. Um, but your pet snails should n uh, not be touching the ground. They should not, you should not hear them go tippy tippy tap tap, tippy tippy tap tap. Yeah, which you do in our house because everybody's toenails grow like it's going out of fashion. Don't they, Jim? They do. They do. So we have to be on them we regularly. Have a lot of tap dancing. We've got to be on them. Plus, we have that's hardwood floors. That's the indicator it's time. Yeah. So if you start hearing, you know, Lord of the Dance, tippy tippy tap toes, <laughs> then you must, must, must trim their nails. Here's an important thing. If you don't trim their nails, it changes the posture of your pets. 
it does. It changes their posture. They start to move slightly backwards on the back of the the, uh, the paw pad, and then you start having some spinal issues. So it's important that you do keep those those nails trimmed properly. Uh, now, salt, ice, de-ice are trapped in the paws and fur can do quite a number on their paws and can cause a heck of a lot of irritation. So how to protect them is that you're going to get into the habit of checking the paws before and after you walk, and you're going to coat them in a paw balm. And it's a, bo- a balm you can make yourself quite easily, but there's, you can buy it everywhere pretty much in your, probably more so in your small independent Is that like the horse hoof stuff? What? The, <laughs> what? <laughs> the horse hoof stuff. I can't remember the name of it. I have no idea, to be honest with you, Jim. But there's quite a few on the market. Look for organic. Look for chemical-free. You want it as safe as possible. Avoid any balms that contain, you know, anything that your pet will lick. Because they will lick things. Just make sure it's not something they can't ingest. So lots of poor balms have a coconut base, which we know is great for their health anyway. Uh, These poor balms provide an effective protective barrier between pores and the ground, and it gives them some added moisture. Often with a pore balm, you can probably put that on their nose too if they've got a dry nose. And uh, after your walk, you're going to gently uh, wipe the pores with a, a warm washcloth and, and pay attention to the toes and under the nails. And then just reapply another layer of balm. So that way, there's a barrier when you go out and walk and you don't have to worry about salt and de-ices and those kind of things. Now, here's another thing. To boot or not to boot, Jim? That is the question. That sounds like it's whether your dog decides or not, not you. <laughs> it is. It really, really is. But dog booties are another form of protection. They're used by many pet parents for hiking um, as they can encounter a myriad of things uh, on a walk. Sharp rocks, twigs, cactus needles, water. And you're going to have um, you can have much better success with boots that are lightweight, waterproof, not a fashion boot. I mean, more of a simple pull-on Velcro strap. Away you go. Um, and it allows for full range of motion. Really important. And nothing that's bulky. And as I said, there's some, you know, there's some cute fashion boots out there. But they're not, they're, they're, that's a fashion, you know. So there are specific hiking boots that are great. And um, you want to avoid boots that, that do not have a rubber sole. You need a rubber sole. Because uh, fabric, some of them are fabric, they can get wet. No one wants to walk in wet boots. So that's an option. And again, it's down to your to your dog whether they want to put them on their feet or not. Now, know what to look for. You've got to know what to look for. Once you've been out and about on your walk, and I mean, I think I blow in my dog's feet every day anyway, <laughs> regardless of whether we've been out or not. But y- uh, you know how you spend time just pet- petting your dog, your cat, giving him a stroke or a massage like I do. <laughs> That's the time that you really should be observing your pets. Look at their skin, look inside their ears, check that their eyes look okay, their nails. Why are you looking at me like that, Jim? You mean like the uh, snow monkeys that we saw in China in in the hot tub in the winter? I'm in love with those snow monkeys. Eating grubs off each other. I want one. I love I love those snow monkeys in the hot tub. They're a wild animal. I'm saying hot tub. It's not hot tub. It's a hot spring. Oh, my God. You said hot tub. (laughs) <laughs> so, well, you know, when you do pet your animals, use it as a way to inspect them for anything that looks out of the norm. And you should do exactly the same for the paws. And if you see any redness, especially between the toes and cracks on the paw pads, you want to clean and reapply the balm and, you know, avoid going outside if you feel that they need to heal a little bit. And of course, if it persists, obviously, off to your vet, you must go. That's an important thing. Don't try and be your own veterinarian. <laughs> and um, you can de-ice uh, your driveways in a pet-friendly way uh, because, as we know, de-ice is laden with chemicals. They're toxic and it's painful to your dog's paws because, you know, the icer heats up. And there are other jobs, other jobs, other projects out on the market that just won't harm your pet's paws. And they're salt-free and they're non-toxic. And it's worth investing in a product where, you know, you would... You would normally use traditional chemicals and you can avoid all that entirely because they cause burns and you just don't need that uh, extra thing to worry about. So it's a simple thing. Look after the paws, inspect them, uh, use a, a, a balm or make one of your own. I'll put a link up for that on our Facebook page if you'd like to do that. I enjoy making things for my pets. You may be that person as well. It's really, really simple. And that way you know what's going on your pet's feet. Because as you know, they lick them, they ingest it, 
yeah, you don't need a nightmare. Uh, that's another thing that happens with the cats, actually, is the, um, well, what do they call it, Jen? The um, antifreeze. And a lot of it drops on the floors, you know, from vehicles, a lot of it. And cats like the taste of it because it's sweet. Horrible product for all animals. And it kills your pets. Yeah. It kills your pets. If you've got an indoor, outdoor cat, it will kill your pets. Or if you've got it in your garage and your dog's running around there and it's dripped on the floor, it's really dangerous. There, there's a big initiative to get uh, labeling on these products and also to get companies to change the uh, chemical makeup of them so that, uh, and also to make sure that they, they smell and taste disgusting, that any pet would be put off from even going near it. Um, it happened to my sister's cat. And it was the most horrific situation because she didn't know what had happened. She had no idea. She just knew she had a very, very poorly cat. And she went to pick the cat up from the vet thinking she was taking the cat home. They said, no, you won't be bringing your cat home because... And they had to make that dreadful decision. So, yeah, de-icer, horrible, horrible, horrible. And um, what's the other word? Antifreeze. So, yeah, so th there's some uh, easy, simple ways that you can protect your pets from from chemicals and yourselves you know there's so many there's so many things we use that <laughs> and i see this a lot where pet parents will say oh i don't do this because it's not good for my pet and yeah and i think oh but you do that and that's not good for you either what are you doing it's chemicals are chemicals avoid them wherever you can well we are talking about cats a lot today clearly uh, it's just one of those things that's happening today and there's a campaign now it's called must you scruff must you scruff your cat? Did you have cats growing up, Jen? No. Uh, we, no. My uncle in Maryland had cats, and my brother always wanted to bring a cat home when we would go on family visits. Oh, really? My parents never, no, my parents never allowed cats. Your cats? We really only had one dog that we that we owned growing up. We found dogs. We used to find hunting owned? dogs all you the time. owned? Yeah, we were dogs. <laughs> yeah, well, back in the 70s, you I owned know, dogs. I know, people were owners, yeah. But, um. We used to find beagles all the time because we lived, you know, out in the countryside. Oh, and okay. so hunters' dogs would get loose and they would come and wander off, and we would just adopt them for the day or whatever, and we'd try <laughs> to keep them. And <laughs> eventually, the hunter would come by and ask if we saw his dog, and there his dog went off again. So we found many beagles and named them all Charlie. I think. Did you? <laughs> yeah. You know, here's the thing that happened this week. Was we had rabbits too, and uh, we had a hamster. Yeah, we had hamsters too. Pearl and I can't remember the name of my hamster. hamster. Isn't that sad? Our hamster was Mudgy. Oh, oh, let's not talk about what happened to Mudgy. No, we won't. Because it's not right. No. It's really, <laughs> it's not right at all what happened to Mudgy. Uh, let's talk about scruffing cats. I don't know how we went down that path. Oh, I'd ask you if you had cats. So lots of my family members have cats. Jim's allergic to them. Hence, no cats. Um, there are lots of concerns over aversive cat scruffing techniques. And you, you see it done by, uh, in the home, you see it done by vets, you see it done by groomers, grabbing by the scruff of the neck. Don't you do that to cats and dogs? Nope. Uh, techniques include applying physical restraint to inhibit the natural behavior of a cat, such as a fight and flight, which may take place during examinations, grooming, anesthesia induction, euthanasia, and blood-taking procedures. It can include the use of neck clips, pinning down, and scruffing to restrict the cat's ability to move. Increasingly, uh... They're be oh, uh, increasingly they're being made uh, being made aware of the scruffing that is an adverse restraint and equipment is being used as a standard to reduce the likelihood of injury to the operator. So so it's been it's been more of a focus on the person as opposed to the animal. But they believe this organization, which is MDC, which stands for the oh the um, Mayhew Animal Home. This is actually their their initiative. They believe that it compromises the welfare of cats unnecessarily. And consultant to M M MDC, Miranda Luck, RVN, said, we have been alerted to the issue by those who appear to feel that they must take extreme precautions to prevent personal injury during the handling of cats. And there seems to be a perception that scruffing must be done in all instances to prevent the handler from being injured. 
MDC have over 50 years' experience of trapping and handling domestic and feral cats and know that scruffing often makes things much more stressful for both the cat and the handler. Uh, they want to challenge the idea that scruffing, pets, uh, scruffing cats in the first instance is the normal thing to do or it's even acceptable to do to do that to a cat. And they believe that in reality, gentle handling is more likely to result in greater safety for both the handler and patient, and scruffing should only be used as a last resort or in adverse, cir- adverse circumstances. So uh, they've got backing that's been uh, given by Cats Protection, the Mayhew Animal Home, uh, Celia had an animal trust and behaviorists, Vicky Halls and Anita Kessley and more. And the aim is to launch the campaign and, campaign and run it for a good year. And uh, any organizations that want to, to join in can, can email this organization, which I'll, I'll put up on our Facebook page. Uh, I, li- I always like to see it, see when you've got your experts involved, not just your organizations, but actual experts, who are your veterinarians and your behaviorists. Uh, it's important because the research and science needs to be there as well. It has to be backed by professionals, so that's a good thing. Um, and so this is this is this is why this is why you shouldn't scruff a cat, Jim. Yeah, many cats act um, react adversely to scruffing, and it results in aggressive behavior. Uh, a mother cat knows the precise pressure to place on the skin at the back of the neck. And she scruffs her kittens mainly to carry them. For an adult cat, the action of a human scruffing, it's just frightening and puts the cat into an unrelaxed and guarded state. And at the end of the day, you're not a cat. (laughs) Important to know. There's all kinds of cool cats, I know. (laughs) But you're you're not a cat. (laughs) Cats have pressure sensors on their teeth, which is why they can just very carefully and gently carry, say, a uh, cat in its mouth. Yeah, they can a mouth in a its mouth cat. in its cat. A so mouth in its mouth. It's okay. I've been sat in my cat before, Jim. When I've texted people back that I was sat in my car, I've actually said I was sat in my cat. And someone asked me, isn't that illegal and cruel? <laughs> anyway, they can carry a mouse very gently, yet they can rip apart its prey. So, you know, cats have something we don't have, which is the, the pressure sensors on the teeth. And if you're not sure what the scruff of the neck is, because you maybe never had a cat, it's the skin on the back of its neck. And lifting a cat or suspending its body weight by its scruff is unnecessary and potentially painful. And it's certainly not a safe or appropriate way to handle your cat. There's a theory that the kittens go limp when their mothers carry them by the scruff. And it's called a flexor reflex. It only occurs in kittens. And it's now thought that gripping the skin uh, in a, a mother cat fashion causes stress and can make a cat more fearful. So there's more research Makes happening. Makes sense. It does. And there's, there's continuous research going on. Science is a good thing. It's a really good thing. And I haven't seen as much science as going on now that in like the last 15 years. It's amazing. There's so much research going on for animals. Anyway, uh, scruffing should only ever be used in an emergency situation where you must restrain your cat quickly, and that's your only option. And apart from this, scruffing should never be used as a training action or a reprimand. Reprimanding a cat in this way will leave you with an ums- upset, confused cat, and you will break your cat's trust in you, which you don't want to do. Negative and forceful scruffing should never be a choice. Always understand I always say this, understand normal cat behavior because I believe that many, many people are reprimanding cats for their normal normal behaviors like scratching. It's normal. Cats need to scratch. That's why Ted Nugent wrote Cat Scratch Fever. <laughs> it's da, not. Da, da. We've got some funny references in the show fever. today. No one's going to take us yeah. seriously. It's just a nutty show. So, and I do see that, uh, I see that not just with, with cats, I see that with dogs. I see people getting mad at dogs for normal behaviors. There's an expectation that they should act like humans, which is ridiculous. Let your cat be a cat, let your dog be a dog. There are lots of things you can do if you've got a let cat that scratches. Let your husband be a furniture. husband. No, you don't, yeah. you're not Let's included. Leave your hus- don't, yeah, you have to make a husband that way too. Leave him to be <laughs> like, just like a cat or a dog. This is the most ridiculous show. I'm just saying. It just (laughs) goes hand in hand with what you're saying. You know, I I always say this. We we do these photo (laughs) fundraisers, and lots of people show up with their pets. You will be stunned. I love love to observe. It's actually a good good lesson for me when we do these photo fundraisers to observe people and their pets. But one of the things that people do, they just can't seem to ask their dog to sit 
in a nice manner. I don't mean the dog sit in a nice manner. I mean this for the people to say to the dog, sit, can you sit for me? You know, George, will you sit for me? No, they have to shout in a very angry way, like rapid fire, sit, 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 sit. I, it's bizarre. It's so bizarre. And it's confusing to a dog because dogs understand tone. They understand tone and intention. And that's through some great research that happened. If the if there's no intention behind the tone and they don't match up, the dog does not believe it. But if they're, if they're together, the dog will understand it. So to shout sit, it, it just makes no sense in an angry manner. It makes no sense whatsoever. But I see that all the time. It's so weird. And you can just ask your dog to sit. I mean, I can say that to my dogs. Like, I'll just say, can you sit for me? And they just sit and look at me. They're so fabulous. And I rarely ask them to sit anyway. I just give them a treat. <laughs> Which is another thing, too. Your dog does not always have to do a trick or a command to get a treat. They don't. You can just give them a treat. Anyway, so where was I going with this? I think that's the end of that one. But basically, understand your cat's behavior and what is normal. Don't get mad at normal behavior. Don't get mad at a cat that scratches. There are lots of things you can do to provide enrichment that that satiates their need to be a cat. There are many ways you can do that. Well, remember the show we had with the uh, the unique cat feeding system? Yes. It's funny you mentioned the cat for cat. Mm. She's a veterinarian, cat veterinarian. She came up with a feeding system that is close to how cats naturally feed, which is not in two sittings a day. Wild cat hunting. Yes. Uh, needs. It was it it what it is, and it's revolutionary. It is changing the lives of cats and it's changing the lives of the people that the cats live with. It is eliminating behaviors, it is reducing obesity in cats. And it's elevating cats' uh, was, uh, feelings of well-being and being happy. And I'll tell you why. Because cats feed, normally cats would feed small and often throughout the day. They would catch their I must, food. I must be a cat. Yeah, well, it's, a, it's a good thing. Because it keeps their energy up throughout the day. So what they do is they hunt for their food. They play with, they, they kill it and kind of play with it. Then they eat it. Then they sleep. Yeah. And if you can't satisfy the prey drive, you're going to have a fairly depressed cat because how else is your cat going to get that, you know, satisfy its, its prey drive if you feed it twice a day and it has to go to, to, to you for food? It, do, it eliminates this need to go and find its food. So she, what did she originally call the business? Because she changed it to Phoebe and Desi, I think. Oh, can you search that for me, Jim? I think it's Phoebe and Desi. If you just search that on on Facebook for me. But it was a different name prior to, and I'm glad they changed the name because it kind of didn't click with what their product was. So let me tell you what it is. Imagine, this is my best description, uh, you, know, you know what a poop bag holder looks like? It looks like a small capsule, and there are five of those. And on the outside of them is a very thick, like, is it a nylon kind of fabric, Jim? And it's got tassels on the end of it. And you put your food inside of it. You can only currently put kibble inside of it. And then you hide that in different areas of the home. So this can, one, keep your cat active. Really important to keep them active. And challenging. And they get to find the food. Because it's got tassels on it, it's like a toy as well. So they get to play with it. So they found their food. They get to play with it. They eat their food. And they sleep. And then they repeat that four more times throughout the day. It's called Doc and Phoebe's Cat Doc Company. Doc and Phoebe's Cat what? Doc and Phoebe's Cat Company. That's right, because I knew she'd change the name. I love her, by the way. I met her at Super Zoo this year. She was on the show. We'll replay that. She's such a good show. But uh, it was so great to see. I would love to hang out with her a little bit more. more. But she's actually a veterinarian, and she's well, 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 well versed on cats. Anyway, so she creates this product and she starts getting these incredible emails and videos back saying, I have a very happy cat now. My cat has lost weight. My cat is active. And they're just more more of a cat, satis a satisfied cat. And she said it's the most amazing thing to receive those emails and those videos because she's, she's, she understands cats so incredibly well. Um, she's trying to work on something where she can put wet food in it, but 
you know, she'll get there. She will get there because ideally you want cats to have wet food because you want them to have moisture in their diet. Really important that they have moisture in their diet. And unless you've got a cat that goes and drinks on command, <laughs> then you need to you need to put the moisture back into their diet for them. But um, she's a fantastic uh, veterinarian, isn't she, Jim? But Doc and Phoebe's again. Doc Doc and Phoebe's Cat Company. Doc and Phoebe's Doc, Cat Company. Doc and Phoebe Okay. No S at the end. Thank you for that. But yeah, so so this is what this is what we're talking about about letting your cat be a cat, understanding cat behaviors, and you can get so much information. It, there's so much out there. It's very exciting. A couple of the uh, veterinarians that you can follow is uh, Dr. Mar- Dr. Marty Becker and also Dr. Sophia Yin. She she did pass away, but her uh, page still continues, and all her findings and research is on there. If you want to know a little bit more about cats. That was a long one. Let's take a quick break. Mm. We'll be back. And when we come back, we'll talk a little bit about fear-free uh, certification and uh, a pit bull ban. And, uh, yeah, that's uh, that's always a big topic, isn't it? We'll be right back. You're listening to Vegas Rock Dog Radio with me, Sam, your host, the queen of rock and roll dogs. Vegas Rock Dog Radio. Pets. People. Pop culture. Welcome to Barking Dog Self-Washing Grooming, your one-stop shop for all your pet's needs. We offer premium natural pet foods, full-service grooming, and an on-site bakery and boutique. You can choose to self-wash your dog or schedule a luxury pampering with our professional groomers. Visit our cool cat section offering feline food, toys, bedding, and litter, while the adventurous dog department has everything you need for your outdoor activities. And don't forget Cody's Healing Garden, featuring flower, aromatherapy, and herbal remedies for pets. Find us at www.barkingdogslv.com and we look forward to seeing you in our neighborhood. Vegas Rock Dog Radio. Pets, people, pop culture. Hi, everyone. Welcome back. Okay, we're going to talk about Fear Free. Fear Free certification is gathering a lot of speed, which is a wonderful thing. Veterinarians, uh, vet techs, groomers, uh, even some dog trainers are getting certified under the Fear Free certification to make vet visits and grooming far less stressful in particular for cats. Uh, think about this. How many times... Is it harder for cats than dogs to go to the groomer? From I will say from my experience, from people I talk to and veterinarians that I speak to, cats have a very, very hard time being transported to the vet. That's why they're always in carriers. Well, they're all pets. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. Mm. How well, you wouldn't put a cat under your arm and go to the vet, would you? Well, I don't know. You could go put a dog under our arm. Well, yeah, but you've got a leash, though, haven't you? Yeah. Except uh, for that puma that I've been seeing that's been... What? That pet puma that people have been talk, uh, showing on Facebook. What are you on about? There's a like a, a undersized puma that can't be released into the wild that someone has, and they treat it like a dog, and it goes to obedience class. Oh, I saw that. Where, d- where did they get it I from? I can't remember. I, I, it's kind of unclear. Mm. But it's like they say it's 30% undersized, and it can't be released to the wild, and... And they, they have a harness on it like a dog, and it goes to obedience class. But I'm looking at that thing going, that puma would tear up every dog in that room. Here's the thing. They can train and release animals into the wild. That's it. They can, and they do. So when people say they can't, they do. But it has to be done with the right you know, the right, well, peop- the right people who, who teach them how to fend for themselves. That's what they do. But yeah, if you if you didn't you couldn't do it if you've just been doing everything for the puma, as we say in England. What you don't call it a puma? It's a puma. We call it a puma. You don't. Yes, we <laughs> do. <laughs> Nobody. E- yes, even in England, in England, they had a military um, aircraft, uh, uh, a helicopter called the puma, not the puma. It they was don't, the puma. No, it was the puma. I'm telling you now. Oh, you're so wrong. I knew he was going to say that. This show is ridiculous this week. Right, so. Here's the thing. Uh, and I hear it all the time, like, oh, gosh, I've got to take my cats to, to the vet. I can't get them in the crate. That My cat's freaking out, losing their minds, and it's just stressful for everybody actually involved. But there are some things that you can do to lessen the stress for everyone. 
uh, that's involved from from the person who's taking the cat to the actual veterinarian or the vet tech. And this is what the fear-free certification is all about. Uh, Dr. Marty Becker, I think, is the one that put this one together, which was great. And I know you're probably listening and saying, but surely vets know how to handle pets when they come in. And I I will say this. We've all probably been in a situation where you go, oh, I don't like how they handled my dog. Oh, I don't like how. Why did they do that? My dog didn't like that, the way that they were handled. And so this is what he felt was a big gap in in the handling of animals and came up with this certification. And, and for example, here's one of the things. So in a cat in particular, uh, to, to lessen all this stress is uh, you can train your cat to go in the crate leading up, days leading up to the actual appointment itself. The longer the lead up, the more opportunity you've got to get your cat a little bit more comfortable in the crate. Because as you know, with any kind of training, whether it's dogs, cats, it's all about positive reinforcement. Dominance training is gone. It's gone. It's it's arcane. You should not be doing it. I want to laugh and say, what? You haven't picked up uh, or, or read anything new in, what, 25 years? You're still teaching in this dominance way. But it's all about positive reinforcement. Positive reinforcement doesn't mean people seem to think it's some kind of hairy-fairy, oh, you just let them do whatever they want and get away with it. And it's like, no. And they think, it's oh, it's just about giving a bunch of treats. It's actually not. It's about a positive experience because we all do well in the positive experience, don't we? So this is what what it's based on. And so, for example, here's one of the things that you can do. And you would take your crate, leave it in your living room, door open, and put some tempting stuff inside, whether it's a toy, catnip, and there's a blanket in there, some treats. And you just let your cat freely go in and out. Same with the dog. You can let them freely go in and out. They get used to going in. They have a positive association with the crate itself. The longer you can do that, the better the result is going to be. You can then, for example, just, um, you know, once you can get your cat in there and you just close the door, you just leave it there for a few minutes, you let them out, you give them a little treat, lots of praise. Again, another positive association. And so you do this in steps. And eventually where you get to close the door, maybe lift up the carrier, walk around the room for a minute, put it back down, door open, lots of praise. Then obviously you're going to work your way to actually getting the crate in the car, securing it in the car, not going anywhere in the car at all, and then coming back in the house. Lots well, of that sounds like a lot of work. You know what? It's worth it, That's Jim. Yeah, I'd, have no, you, I'd, it's worth I'd it. be assigning a lot of that to you. That's fine, because I would do that. I know. I would totally do that. It's okay. Because here's the thing. I, I, I've seen friends that go, oh, I'm just so stressed out. I've got to take my cat to the vet. I just can't even you cope. You have to practice taking your cat to the vet. You have to practice taking your pets to the vet. That's what you do. And eventually, you'll get in the car, you'll drive five minutes, you'll come back, and then... You know, the ultimate is that you get yep. to get to the vet itself. Little boy gets excited to get in the car, but somehow he knows when we're heading to the vet. They mm-hmm. recognize where we are. <laughs> That's yeah. the thing. Uh, and so, so it's a, it's a, yeah, it's a little bit of time. It's some steps, but it's worth it. It's absolutely worth it. But I do recommend, and I am not paid by them, is by Sleepy Pod. Sleepy Pod have one of the only crash test approved carriers, pet carriers, in the United States. Yeah, we've gone over that. A million times. Yeah. Uh, they have the only approved, one of, one of the only approved pet harnesses also. And uh, they crash test at the same rate they crash test for a baby carrier, baby seat, 30 miles an hour. So it is important that you do have something safe. But why I'm recommending the Sleepy Pod carrier, it's a, it's a round carrier with a dome on the top. It's mesh on the top, zip through the center of it. And the whole top unzips off. And it's three in one. It's a carrier. It's a seat. It's a bed. It's a bed. So the great thing is about that when it comes to fear-free training is you take the dome off completely. You've got your bed. There's the bed in your house. It's something they're familiar with. They're associated with being at home, being comfortable. It's theirs. And that's a brilliant way to train them because all you're doing then is taking them in their bed into your car and off to the vet. They're absolutely fantastic. They are about $180 worth every penny. Very well made. High oh. quality materials. Like not, you cannot they didn't believe. not skip at all on the material. Like you cannot believe. And so, you know, think about those kind of things because, you know, once, you, once you've got 
pets in the car you want them to be safe as well but that's a for me i think a perfect product to practice with because it is their bed and then eventually the dome goes on the dome comes off the dome, lots of positivity all around it and a very positive association so that's basically the premise of it that's one example of how they use it your veterinarians practice something quite different which is yeah you know, there's a there's some petting and some you know you know getting to know your pet once they get there not all vets do that it's like up on the table here we go that's quite scary for pets so this is this is something you can work with your veterinarian on sometimes they'll work with you and say you know maybe we need to give your pet some kind of a sedative prior to getting in the car as well if they need an extra aid or maybe cbd oil or something like that but ask your vet to work with you ask for t- for tips look for a vet who's fear free certified but there are a lot of people that are getting certified as, as well as, as vets, which is groomers. They handle your pets all the time. And, uh, you know, dog trainers and pet taxis, you know, when people have to pick them up and, you know, take them to daycare or <laughs> whatever. It's uh, I think it's a very important thing as it's gathering lots of speed. It's a great thing to be out there uh, to make things easier for you and your pets. Right, my last thing is the pit bull ban. One of them was lifted. Well, that's good news. So our lovely friends over at the Animal Legal Defense Fund in California, uh, it's a huge organization of attorneys who represent animals, and they have been doing so since (sighs) late 70s, early 80s, I want to say. And they represent many, many, many animals, usually in uh, abusive situations, you know, situations that are being exploited, uh, things like SeaWorld, circuses, and uh, of, uh, of similar kind of situations they also help with uh uh, putting bills and laws together supporting them language those kind of things brilliant organization we've had stephen wells on the show before and one of the best interviews we ever did i highly recommend supporting them if you're in the legal field and you want to help animals they're the people you would look to if you are thinking of going into the legal field and would like to pair your love of animals with the legal field they're the people you need to look towards. They've got chapters all over the country. They're so, so impressive. Well, anyway, um, they put out some great news this week. Uh, Montreal's new mayor has lifted the city's sweeping ban on pit bulls. And 15 months ago, we were just outraged over this. It was a controversial r- restriction that went into place, went into effect. Uh, the animal control bylaw made it illegal to adopt or otherwise acquire pit bull within city limits and required any pit bulls grandfathered fathered in to be muzzled when in public, kept on a leash no longer than four feet in order to be grandfathered in, and Mont- Montreal pit bull owners were required to purchase a special permit and pass a criminal background check, which was it's just amazing. outrageous. What do you mean it's amazing? Well, no, they make them pass criminal background checks. W- why? Do you feel like you should pass a criminal background check I mean to have pr- a dog? Oh, no. Well, no. I don't know. I mean, no. is it justification because so to make sure that you're not a criminal and you're not going to be abusive? or No. It has nothing to do with the this dog. This was a blanket. You've got a pit bull, which is we all know is not a breed. Oh, okay. I get it. And I was thinking completely different. I was thinking completely different. I was thinking because... People get them for bait dogs, and they're ed- they're in criminal enterprises. So that if you get one, they background you to make sure that you can't get one. That's what I thought. I th- I was thinking of the the no. possible good intention of no, it. Oh no, this was just a blanket. I mean, you're, it's well, like well, I don't know. I I see now it's a like a prejudice towards someone who has that ki- type yes. of dog. Yes, a prejudice I, towards the dog. But I was thinking it was more towards. Someone who may be entering criminal enterprises. Yes, and they but keep the, the thing is, from those people. you probably couldn't do that here, though. Think of this is Canada, but you couldn't do that here with the laws. You can't things. just say, oh, I think you might start fighting pit bulls. So we're going to do a criminal background check on you before you can have this dog. We need to talk to our Canadian people about this. Well, anyway, but this is the good news. So uh, Mayor Valerie Plant and her political party, Project Montreal, which won a major of city council seats in November 2017, and that was their municipal election, made it a campaign promise to repeal that ban. And according to the Canadian Broadcast Corporation, it emerged as a key election issue. Prior to the election, representatives of the party promised it would revisit the city's animal control plan and shift the focus to responsible dog ownership rather than banning certain breeds. The ban was lifted in December of last year. 
The bylaw was written by an outpouring of public concern following the tragic death of Christine Vadnais, who was fatally attacked in her backyard by a neighbor's dog in uh, June 2016. Although the elements of the bylaw ta- targeting pit bulls has been repealed, Montreal still has restrictions on dogs deemed dangerous to public safety, which pertain equally to all dogs regardless of breed. Oh, I have a lot to say about this. Anyway, newly elected city councillor Craig Sauv, Sauv, it looks like Suave, but it's not, Sauv, said that targeting just one breed created a false sense of security because science shows there is no type of dog that is intrinsically more dangerous than all others. All dogs are dangerous, and the bigger the dog, the more the bite could hurt. That's a weird statement. He's right in one respect, which is there, and there actually is no science to prove that any breed is born inherently aggressive. But, yes, all dogs potentially can bite. Potential. Yeah, it's a fear protection response. So he was in, incorrect in that. But he's correct in saying, of course, you know, big dog, big big jaws, big teeth, big bite. It's going to be a bigger bite, clearly. Um, it, uh, almost immediately after the ban went into effect... The Montreal SPCA filed a lawsuit against the city, arguing that the new provisions ran counter to the Article 898.1 of the Civil Code of Quebec, which grants animals the status of sentient beings. Mm-hmm. That's a good thing. We probably didn't know about that. The that's organi- a good thing the Can- Canadians have done. That's right. And the organization also charged that the definition of pit bull in the rule, which included three distinct breeds, mixed thereof, and any dog with the characteristics of those breeds, was too vague. Yeah, because there is no pit bull. Uh, you know, I'm curious as to where that came from. We don't call them pit bulls in England anyway. The we call them pits. we call them Staffordshire Terriers. Because the they name. go in the fighting pit. They oh, is that what it is? Pit. Oh, okay. Why did I not know this? But here's the interesting thing about this is, I mean, I voiced my opinion. I wrote to them as well, even though I'm not in Canada, because um, you've got people making laws where they don't bring experts in, and it's a dangerous situation on many, many levels. Anyway, people were literally moving out of the area when this ban took place, you know, because yeah. I knew rescues that said, send them to the States, we'll take the dogs and rescue. And people who had these dogs as their pets, they had family members outside of that ban, ban area take their dogs. So the dogs would not get euthanized because here's what they were going to do. They were going to euthanize those dogs, um, particularly in the shelters. I'm saying euthanize, it's not. It's killing. Euthanization is for an animal you cannot save. You cannot save it. It is so sick. It is severely injured. Nothing can be done. That's when euthanization comes in. Euthanization is not for healthy animals. And so I just call, I always, let's call it what it is. You're just killing them. You're just killing them. And it never rids a problem, trust me. Killing is not the way out of a problem <laughs> with animals. Uh, a common criticism of breed-specific legislation is that trying to determine a dog's breed based on appearance is inherently problematic and that the category of pit bull itself um, is itself arbitrary and overly broad. Empirical data confirms that not only average citizens but even animal care professionals cannot identify breeds by appearance. Given this ambigu- ambiguity... Breed specific legislation is almost impossible to enforce in a fair manner. We, by the way, in Nevada are a uh, breed specific legislation free state. You cannot discriminate discriminate against any breed. Just so you know that. However, however, apartment buildings and complexes do. still discriminate by yeah. size. Yeah, they do. Which is so stupid. Mm. It's just again uneducated. Uh, critics of um, no, as in the U.S. jurisdiction in Canada. They have not taken a unified approach to the issue of breed-specific legislation. Neighboring province Ontario has had a ban on pit bulls since 2005, which was upheld by the Ontario Court of Appeals in 2009, and that decision was cited by the Quebec Court of Appeal in December 2016, ruling that's, that supported the now-defunct Montreal ban. However, within Ontario, Ottawa, um, uh, they've been vocal about not enforcing the ban. The city of Winnipeg enacted a breed ban in 1990, and the city of Edmonton repealed its ban in 2012, preferring to, fo- preferring to focus on dog behavior rather than even their breed. Uh, Calgary, however, which does not have uh, BSL legislation, has been called the gold standard in its approach to the problem of dangerous dogs, which is still, still that's just a weird statement. Uh, Montreal's new administration has suggested it will emulate the Calgary model, 
which focuses on owner education as a key element to preventing dog attacks and ensuring public safety. Calgary has some of the strictest animal regulations in North America. Uh, remember not to move to Calgary. Uh, there are hefty fines. Oh, no, no, no. This is a no. good thing. This Calgary's is a good, the good one. No, this is a good thing. They have hefty fines to owners who don't control the dogs and strict rules about licensing and harnessing. That's good. So if you are a Canadian... You, you need to go to Calgary. Calgary. <laughs> uh, money raised through licensing is dedicated to educational campaigns for pet owners. Oh, I love that. And the most important part of the education campaign uh, is, is they, they feel is that part of it. In Calgary, compliance is very high. Owners of pets in Calgary have been incentivized to participate. Oh, I love that. Uh, the Montreal SPCA, which lobbied against the municipal ban on several fronts, including the aforementioned lawsuit, is currently sponsoring a petition to block province-wide legislation that would give the Quebec government authority to ban specific dog breeds. The organization calls Bill 128, which was p- proposed in April 2017, costly, unfair, ineffective in reducing the risk of or severity of dog bites. Along with the petition, the SPCA has posted alternative solutions to address the public safety issues of aggressive dogs on its website. The website is saferkindercommunities.com. The swift repeal of this legislation points to the power citizens have when using their voices at the ballot box. Alana Devine, who is the Director of Animal Advocacy at the Montreal SPCA, said we do believe that part of why Project Montreal was elected is their commitment to important animal welfare issues. I'm impressed. I'm so impressed because we've had some blows recently in Nevada with a highly uneducated and no reason to be uneducated uh, councilmen and um, commissioners making decisions about animals that they have no experience, no education, no science, didn't bring any experts in, did not read anything that myself and other animal advocates and experts sent into them, did not read any links, did not watch any documentaries, did not bring in any professionals. Self-aggrandizing, patronizing politicians. Yeah, that's exa- really it's it exactly is. what happened. And through that... They ended up uh, repealing a ban we were having put in place, which would have been this week, where you could not buy puppies from stores because they're supplied by puppy mills, which are uh, abuse mills, basically. That's the only way to describe it. And therefore, more animals will suffer from that decision. Shocking, outrageous, irresponsible. Had me so fired up <laughs> that week. I almost lost my mind. And and so do many, many other people, because when it comes down to animal welfare, it's not hard to stand up for animals. It's so easy. It's really easy. So I never understand why some of these things happen. And how can you be in a position and not do due, due diligence and actually read and bring in experts and make a very informed decision on that? It was very, very bad. So, but it's not dead. We're going to bring that that uh, that bill back. It's not it's not dead. We're going to put our energies back into it again and get the citizens on board who care about these animal issues. Well, Jim, it's been <laughs> it's been quite the show this week. We've covered lots and lots of stuff for everybody. I will put links up on our Facebook page so you don't have to go looking for these stories and uh, and the information. Uh, we've covered protecting your dog's paws in the wintertime. We've covered your uh, lifting of the pit bull ban in Canada, which is fantastic. I mean, that's really, really great news because how distressing to have to relocate your pet or rescue yeah. animals because you think they're going to get killed. Fun- really a big cat show today as well. It was a big cat show today. Big, not big cats, but a lot of cat Yeah, stuff. we talked about how, you know, not to scruff Even your cats. Even we talked about a big cat. How to make visits better to the vet and to the, the groomers. Pu- the puma. The puma, <laughs> the puma, and uh, the uh, cat forgets. Cat forget. I love that she calls herself that. The cat forgets product, Doc and Phoebe. What was it again? Doc and Phoebe. Dot com. Doc and Phoebe. Uh, we'll put it up on Facebook for Phoebe you. Phoebe and Doc. Phoebe and Doc. Dot com. com, so that your cat can satisfy its natural. Pray, drive, be happier, more active, maybe lose some weight. And you know what? She was n- noting as well, because of that, other behavioral issues were disappearing. So it's a good thing. It's a really, really good thing. Well, if you like today's show, 
thank you for listening in. We'd love for you to share the show with your friends and family. We hope that uh, with every show you listen to, there's a takeaway. You learned something from the show. Probably probably gave you a good laugh too, because I can't pronounce half the things <laughs> today. <laughs> Just m- making words up as I go along. Um, and that, uh, you know, I say you, you go with a little nugget of information that helps you be a better pet parent. And remember, you can help an animal in need. Either rescue, adopt, donate, volunteer, or share their information. Rescue your next family member. Replace the word shop with adopt and be kind to all animals. Thank you, Jim, for pressing the buttons today. You're welcome. (laughs) And uh, please take a moment to run over to our Facebook page, follow us on Instagram, Twitter, all those great places. And don't forget to post pictures of your pets on our Facebook wall because we love to see your for kids uh thank you for listening in it's been uh, it's been a fun show today and today you have been listening to vegas rock dog radio what it is all about pets people and pop culture i'm your host sam the queen of rock and roll dogs and always kiss your pets good morning and good night and i'll see you next time you've been listening to vegas rock dog radio pets people pop culture Visit Vegas Rock Dog Radio for more information. Find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And subscribe on iTunes and iHeartRadio. And remember, give your fur babies a big kiss from me, Sam, the queen of rock and roll dogs. You must not rely on the information in this broadcast from our hosts as an alternative to medical advice from your veterinarian. If you have any specific questions about a medical matter regarding your pets, you should consult your veterinarian or specialist. 